Hi guys, today we're here at our warehouse again in San Diego and I'm going to walk you through the features of the PP166 power bank uh, in addition to doing a couple of installations and then showing you guys uh, how it runs a few different things and how the solar charging works and um, how you hook up your uh, PP166. So when you do get your PP166, you're going to get a box like this. And inside your box, as always, is your user manual. Please take a quick look at that so you know how the charging features work and everything else works. And aside from that, we have the PP166 itself. And underneath in a box is your charger and your charging cable. So I'm going to open everything up, lay everything out on the table, and uh, show you guys how everything works. Uh, just before we do that, uh, there are six different cables at the moment that we, sh uh, that we sell for the PP166. Uh, three of them ship with the product uh, as standard. So you have a 12 volt bare end um, auto on cable. We have a 12 volt bare end cable with a switch in line. So you can sort of control the on and off uh, feature from the cable itself. And we have a five volt USB cable that ships with the product when you buy the product online. And then we do have other cables, uh, sort of specialty cables that we have um, and we'll, we'll have more cables coming up for this product over the next few months. Uh, but we have a cigarette lighter, 12 volt, uh, for pumps, fridges, kettles, and everything. We've got uh, a Hobie uh, live well cable, and we have an SAE cable uh, for 12 volt lights and such. So I'm gonna open everything up, lay it on the table, and show you guys a couple of the features, and show you how to run a few things on here. Okay, so we've got everything opened up. We have our PP166. Um, four pounds, in case you're asking what the weight of this is. Uh, PP166, we have the six cables that we currently sell on our website. The, the first three cables come with your package, as I mentioned. You've got a bare end 12 volt cable. So this is for running your fish finder, lights, pretty much anything you want. And they do come with a couple of these waterproof connectors. And I'll show you guys how to put those on as well. Uh, those are really nice and easy to do. Uh, then we do have a 12 volt cable, again, bare cable, same connector, but this has an inline waterproof switch. So you can turn this on and off from the cable itself. So if you're running this to your fish finder, you want to leave the battery on your kayak, that's fine. You can just turn it on and off from the source, basically, and conserve your battery. We do have a five volt uh, cable, just standard USB cable. Now this is, it is waterproof when the cap is on. It is not waterproof once the cap is open, uh, but it is also surface mounted. So if you did want to mount this anywhere to your to your kayak's body or, or anywhere else, you can open this and you can basically drill a hole through whatever you want to put this through and this acts as your nut. I would recommend putting some silicone or some marine glue on this um, if you're going to be installing this long term. And once that's on there, now you've got a waterproof um, seal there as well. So. That's your USB cable. We do sell three other cables online. We do have a cigarette lighter um, socket. Again, not waterproof once this is open, but it is waterproof on this end that goes to the battery. Uh, we do have this specialty cable for the Hobie live well. So this plugs right into your Hobie live well and you'll be able to run that Hobie live well for, for many, many hours. And then of course we have our standard SAE cable uh, this is very common on uh, kayak lights and a lot of other waterproof, um, sort of smash-proof connectors, if you will. Um, so these three cables we have on the website for sale. Um, these three cables ship with your battery, and of course you can buy additional cables uh, if you if you have needs for that. Um, so I'm going to show you guys firstly how to charge your PP166. So when you get it uh, in the mail, you do want to get it in there and get it a good full charge. So charging is very easy. Your first port is your charging port. So we're just gonna open that up and you align your connectors. You'll see your lights sort of flashing across the screen. And that and your LED light on your charger is gonna be on while that's happening. So that's gonna continue until this battery is fully charged. And once it's fully charged, those lights are just gonna stay on. All six lights are gonna stay on and that light's gonna turn green. Um, so we'll leave that on there for a few minutes. I think this battery is pretty charged, so you may be able to see that at the end. If not, I mean, that's what's going to happen. It's, you're going to get a full solid uh, bar on your LEDs and a green LED on your charger. Um, 
to answer the question that yes, you can drain and charge this battery at the same time. So if you wanted to, um, and we're gonna do that right now, we're gonna charge our Sony um, speaker here. So we're gonna get our USB cable, and while we're still charging, we're gonna plug in our USB cable, and I'm gonna hold this to my face this time, so I'm not struggling to plug it in. There we go. So there's our USB outlet. And it gets plugged right back there into our speaker. And you'll see it come on right away. So now we're charging our speaker and uh, we're still charging the battery. Now, the good thing about this is if you're out there uh, in the wild and you don't have a place to charge, you, of course, you've got your solar panel. So you can actually leave your solar panel, uh, which produces about 45 watts of power. You can leave that solar panel charging the battery while you run something else. So I've gone out, I've had my fridge that only takes about two or three amps to, to run, uh, running uh, and, and sort of being cooled with the solar panel on that provides about four amps of power. So I'm actually gaining and charging the battery while I'm running the fridge indefinitely, which is really nice. Um, so that's your USB right there. Now your same USB, you can run other things. You can run a light. Uh, what else have we got here? Got my phone. And plug into there and run. Okay, so that's our USB cable. And I'm gonna plug this back into where it was. Now you guys will notice that while we're doing this, during this entire photo shoot, we do have a PP-166 sitting in this fish tank. And not only is it charging my phone, but it's running the lights in the back and it's running the TV up here. So the tr TV is a little trickier because you do need an inverter to do that. So we have a small inverter here that we've got plugged in. And these things are about 15, 20 bucks on Amazon. Um, we do have that inverter running that TV. So the whole time we're doing this video, we have that TV running, the lights running, and this thing's charging my phone. So you know, you can really get a lot of use out of this. And we do have it plugged into the solar panel, actually. So we're not in sunlight here, so we're probably not charging much, but it's probably trickling in, a, you know, a fraction of an amp or something. So, so you can do all of that at the same time. Um, so there you go. Now we're going to hook up a 12 volt device and show you guys how that works. So of course, one of my favorite things to run with these batteries are 12 volt devices, because there are so many things that need 12 volt um, power. And I've got a number of things here, but one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up this fan, which is a 12 volt fan, and I'm gonna set that up, oops, I'm gonna set that up on our um, inline switch cable. This is the 12 volt cable that comes with your uh, device, and it's got these two little um, waterproof connectors. I'm gonna set up this fan, so you guys see how that's set up, and it's very easy. Let's get the speaker out of the way. We'll charge that later. So on your cable, you're going to get a red and a black output. Black is obviously negative, red is positive. So we're going to slide one of these guys on there. And once it's on there, you do need a crimp tool or um, sort of needle nose pliers will, will do as well. Uh, but if you've got a crimp tool, it makes it really easy. So just crimp that connector on there so there's your black I'm gonna do the same thing with the red now I know that on my fan my white struck striped wire here is my positive so got a little stripe white stripe there, that's positive I know. So that's gonna to go to my red connector and I'm gonna crimp that as well. And I know the other one is obviously my negative, so that's gonna get in there. Now these connectors are waterproof if you use a heat gun or a lighter 
to close them up. So I've got a lighter here. If you've got a heat gun, it's, it's a little bit nicer. There's less of a chance of burning things. But if not, a lighter does the job. So if you heat these up properly, you will get a good seal and it'll be fully waterproof. So now you've got a nice sealed wire with those waterproof connectors. And we're gonna connect to our PP166. Nice and easy. So you'll notice that some of the, the cables that don't have the inline uh, connector, once you plug them in, they automatically turn the battery on and they'll just sit there waiting for you to, uh, to power them. But this does have an inline um, switch. So that switch is gonna be what's gonna turn our uh, device on or off. You'll notice that that switch will turn on your system. You've got six LEDs, so that's a full battery. Again, that switch will turn things on and off. So that's off. And again, once you put it on, you get the lights and the system is on. If you use the cable that doesn't have the switch, the system would just automatically come on when you plug the cable in, the way our USB cable came on when we plugged it in. So with that, I'll show you guys a few different things here that we have going that we can sort of plug into our PP166 and run and charge. We have a kettle here. I like taking this out when we're on a road trip. We've got about two cups of water out of this guy and it boils in about 15 minutes. You can boil this about three or four times with this battery, which is really nice. Um, so there we go. Again, same plug. And this one is on a switched cable. So you'll see that I can turn it on and off. I think you can see the LED on there. So once it's on, you'll see that this light will come on and the LEDs there will come on and you'll start boiling your water. Again, I can plug in a USB cable at the same time that I've got here. And while I'm boiling my water, I can also be charging my speakers. And I could probably, well, I could definitely run my fan, but what's better than that actually, and my favorite, which we've been running until just now, is the fridge. So we'll plug the fridge in here. And we're gonna go over to the fridge. Now, you will notice if you're taking a really heavy drain out of the battery, your lights will temporarily drop a couple of bars, but that doesn't mean it's empty. It just means you're draining it really hard. So there's our fridge plugged in. You'll see the fridge coming on. And we're at minus one Celsius in the fridge already. And we have our beer in there nice and cold. And you'll see. And that battery will run this fridge with no solar charging for about four and a half hours. Um, and if you've got solar charging, basically indefinitely because the solar charger produces more power than that fridge needs. So, um, so it's a really nice setup with that. So that does it for connecting the wires and the var various things you can run on your PP166. Okay, so now that we've covered everything, just gonna take you guys through some frequently asked questions about the product. So you'll see again, we've got two batteries here. One is submersed in the fish tank, running the TV, running the lights and charging my phone. We now have a second battery sitting here, boiling our water, charging our speaker and running that fridge. And we do have a solar panel connected to the one inside the fish tank. So that's, you know, if there was sun, it would also be charging out at the same time. Um, if you go to our website, there is a, sort of a good uh, variety of things that this thing can run and charge and the number of times it can do that. So for example, your smartphone will do 25 to 30 times charge. That speaker will do nine to 12 times. You can run tablets and laptops um, for, for hours, fish finders for literally two or three times on the water for sure. Uh, fans and lights and the mini fridge and so on. Um, there are some limitations to this, obviously. Uh, there is a nine amp draw off of the connectors. So you can't draw more than nine amps from any connector. Uh, and you can't draw more than 17 and a half amps from the entire battery collectively. Uh, so there are a couple of limitations to the battery in that sense. So if you do have a really big, um, heavy drawing device, you will not be able to run that off that cigarette port. Uh, but for most small outdoor equipment, uh, you, you'll have no problem at all running them for hours and hours. Um, the battery, again, is submersible to 100 feet, so it's quite rugged. We've made it to be really rugged, so you can leave it outside 
and have it sitting outside indefinitely in the sun, rain, whatever you've got elements. So, um, and that's about it, guys. If you have any other questions, uh, links, lots of links below explaining uh, and taking you to our website with all pictures and, and descriptions. Uh, and of course, you can email, call, or message us on social media anytime. Thanks for spending some time with us. Mm -hmm.